going to show you today how to test a transmitter and um, associated equipment. When you have a problem with your transmitter, you notice that the readings are off and maybe it's at low power, um, not normal power, and you decide that you probably have a problem. So most uh, we have two different transmitters that are being used, and this is the um, the low power transmitter that many of you are using at your low power stations. It's a 15 watt transmitter. There's also um, a higher power transmitter, 300 watts, that's being used at some stations. And I don't have that transmitter today. I'll have to make another video for that. But this the procedures can be used for the 300 watt transmitter that we're going to use today. Now. I'm going to show you the other components we're going to use. This is a dummy load. Um, there's a couple of variations on this, but your dummy load would probably look somewhat similar to this. It would be black and have big fins. And this is a large dummy load. This one's only rated for 150 watts. But if you have a 300 watt transmitter, you should have a little bit larger one that's rated for 300 watts that you can use for testing the 300 watt transmitter. It, this is a small dummy load, and it is only... Um, this one's rated for 25 watts. So you could use this for testing a small transmitter. You do not want to use this for testing a large transmitter um, unless you were only at 15 watts with the large, or 25 watts or less with a large 300 watt transmitter. Um, so you want to use a dummy load that will be able to handle the power rating that you're working with. Now the dummy load simulates um, an antenna. So you can hook this up to your transmitter uh, just for testing purposes to see if the transmitters function properly and um, that's what the dummy load is for. It's for testing the transmitter without the antenna to see if the transmitter is working properly. Um, we're going to be using some jumper cables and should have moved that. Um, hopefully you should have some cables to be able to connect this stuff up for testing. And then we're going to be using a watt meter and this watt meter is just an external meter that can tell us how many watts our transmitter is actually putting out. Now, transmitter might say that it's putting out so many watts, but you think there's a problem, and we're not sh certain maybe if the transmitter wattage is actually correct. What it says is that what's actually being uh, produced. So we can look at the watt meter, and then we can see what the watt meter is saying the transmitter is actually producing. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of things about the watt meter before we hook it up. It does have a power port, and you do not need to hook that up. That is only for um, a light here, which is unnecessary. So don't worry about that port. You can just ignore that. Now, when you're saying port, you mean that little yeah, thing? Yeah, power port okay. right here. You don't need to hook that up. Don't okay. worry about that at all. It's going to work perfectly fine without that. And my co-host here is Alex. He's behind the camera. He's asking questions if it doesn't make sense, because you might ask the same question if you're watching this video and you're not sure. So we're going to hook up the transmitter first. Now, never ever uh, power up a transmitter without having a dummy load connected or your antenna connected. Repeat that again. Never hook up, power up your transmitter without a dummy load connected or your antenna connected otherwise you could you could cause serious damage to your transmitter you always need to have the dummy load hooked up or an antenna hooked up before you power up the transmitter so we're going to go ahead and hook this uh, transmitter up now these transmitters do have a small adapter on it so so that's there's an adapter there just be aware of that when you're screwing and unscrewing and um, so we're going to hook up this cabling and we're going to go ahead and hook up our kilowatt meter. Now you'll see these are labeled and one says antenna, ANT for antenna, mm -hmm. one says TX for transmitter. See that? So TX is for transmitter. We're going to hook that up to the transmitter side. And then on the antenna side, on the antenna side you could hook the antenna up for testing. You can do the testing also through the antenna or you can hook up the dummy load on the antenna side. And the dummy load, again, simulates um, an antenna. It's just for testing. You want to make sure you get that on nice and snug. Make sure it fits and you screw it down nice and snug. 
You don't have to over tighten, but just make sure it's so. Smooth. So the end an antenna that would get hooked up here is coming in from the actual antenna. Is that correct? Yeah, your coax from your antenna could be hooked there, okay. and you could do testing of your antenna also. You could hook this in just for testing the transmitter with the antenna hooked up, which would be uh, a good thing. And we need to make another video actually doing that probably. Um, so now I'm, I've got um, the transmitter hooked up to this coax and into the kilowatt meter. I've got the dummy load on the other side. Now if you had a bigger dummy load, you might need to hook in just a piece of coax here and then go ahead and hook in your dummy load on the other end of that coax. Just because you wouldn't be able to hook this up directly, probably it's too mm. big and bulky, it wouldn't fit. Okay, we're going to power up our transmitter. Now this transmitter is having some problems. It is, um, it's only showing that it's outputting 0.9 watts, less than one watt. That's super low power, and that's not acceptable. So we want to see if, if the meter is actually right. Right now it's showing 0.4 watts. Earlier it was coming up to 0.9 watts. So there's, there's a problem, most likely, with this transmitter. And so um, we can check the watting watt setting. Um, on this transmitter um, by hitting watt we can go over and we can see what it's set for and right now it's set for 13.1 watt, watts it'll go up to 15 you can go up to 15 or you can go down here and uh, you can hit this is enter so now it's set for 15 watts but will it go to 15 why watts? do I want to go up or down well normally you're going to be running at 15 watts full power oh, okay. but if there was a problem you could lower the watts okay. but normally in normal operation, you'd be at 15 watts. So it's only putting out 0.6 watts, even though it's rated for 15 watts. Mm -hmm. So now we want to see um, what the meter says. And indeed, the meter is showing just over 1 watt. Now, there are two scales with this meter. The blue button here is right now is out. And when the blue button is out, the numbers on the bottom side of the meter and maybe I can tilt it up a little bit. Yeah, can you it's see okay. it well? I'll, I'll take it okay. up. The numbers on the bottom side of this line over here, um, and this is the forward power. It's listed forward. Bottom side here, go uh, zero, and then the first line is a one, then you see the two, then three is the third line, four, five, six, and so forth. Um, those are the watts. It goes all the way up to 30 watts on the bottom line. When that button is out, that's the scale you look at, the bottom side numbers. And this transmitter right now is just putting out, according to the meter, it's putting out a little over one and a half watts, according to the kilowatt meter. And we would hope the kilowatt meter is indeed accurate. If it's not, then we're in kind of in trouble because we're relying on that to verify what the transmitter is saying. Those transmitters are saying 0.9 watts output. So it's pretty close. It's close enough. You're not going to get an exact 0.9 here, and you can't even read 0.9 over here. It gives you an idea of what the transmitter is actually putting out. Now, when you depress this blue button here on the kilowatt meter, then um, the scale then, when it's depressed, is on the top side. And, it's, and you can see the needle's gone all the way down to nothing. It's gone down to zero. Mm -hmm. Let's cross the top. We see the first reading is 20 watts, 40, 60. 100, 200, 300. This is the scale you'll be using to test for the high power 300 watt transmitter. If you have the smaller transmitter like we're looking at here, you'll want to leave that button out and then you'll see the scale for the lower numbers will be what you'll be looking at on the bottom side of this line. Mm. Now on the right side of this meter it has a reflected power. Um, and right now it's hovering right at zero, which is excellent. If that number rises, and by the way, the SWR meeting here on the transmitter is 1.0, and that's a good reading. If that reading gets above 2.0, then you're having some kind of an issue with uh, your transmission system. Now, with the dummy load, it should always be really low, unless there's a problem with our coax um, here with one of the connections. It should always be 1.0 when it's hooked up with this system. But with your transmitter hooked to your antenna, if that number is high, then um, there's some problem, probably it could be water in a connector. Um, that's often the case. And that can uh, cause some of the power that's going out on the transmission system to be reflected back 
um, to the transmitter, which can cause damage to the transmitter over time. Now the transmitter is intelligent enough that it can measure that reflected power coming back, and if it gets too high, it will reduce the watts, the power, on its own. And that's why you can sometimes see that the transmitter, the reading is reduced because the SWR number has become too high, the reflected power. On the larger transmitter, it actually says REV, that's the reflected power. It's a different number, but that number should for the SWR here should be no higher than 2.0 for the larger transmitter. Um, the watt reading should be no higher than 10% of the total power. So if you're transmitting at 300 watts, which is what um, you should be transmitting at, then 10% would be 30 watts reflected. If it's higher than 30 watts, you've got a significant problem. You need to reduce the power and you need to uh, do some testing and then call us in Guam if you can't figure out what's going on. And so that's testing with the kilowatt meter. Um, and um, one more uh, thing um, regarding the dummy load. You do not want to run the dummy load um, with the transmitter at full power for more than maybe five minutes. Um, the dummy load is only for, for short-term um, testing. It can become very hot. You could burn it out if you run the dummy load with the transmitter with the dummy load attached for very long. So don't do that. You could reduce the power and run the dummy load a little longer, but you shouldn't need to. You're just doing the short-term testing just to see if the readings are correct. So right now this transmitter is showing 1.2 watts output. SWR is 1.0, which is a good reading. And here on the meter, we're showing uh, it's almost up to 2 watts. Um, so, And it's okay that the readings are slightly different. You're probably not going to get exact, but you should expect them to be close. It's maybe at 1.8 there, watts. Um, if I was running this transmitter at the full 15 watts, which it seems to be uh, damaged, um, then the, we would want, want, again, not to run it for very long because this dummy load here would get quite hot quite quick and we could burn it out. So, um, as I told you in the beginning, this transmitter has a problem, and the problem is within the transmitter because the setting, it's set for 15 watts output, but it's only putting out 1.2 watts. The SWR number is fine. It's 1.0, which is an excellent reading. It's the very best reading we can get. And so there's a problem with the transmitter. That's what we've determined. If um, the if the SWR reading were high, then we would have some problem with our coax um, or antenna. Some problem there in the transmission system that we would have to identify. We'd have to go out and look, and we'll have to make some more videos on identifying those problems when you find that your SWR or your reflected power reading is too high. So I think that's about it. Alex, any other questions? No. Um, the only other question um, that came to mind was uh, when you detect there is uh, water in the, um, in the connections, do you go ahead and fix that, or is that something you'd uh, call it in also. I think we're going to have to make another video, a how-to video where we go and actually look at some connections to the okay. antenna and... Um, so that, that'll be part of your next uh, Yeah, I production. think we'll make another video on that. Okay. All right. Thank you.